Kunuk is one of the most northerly settlements on Earth. And after months of darkness and Arctic storms, the ocean turns from ice to water, almost in an instant. Last summer, just before our president tried to buy Greenland, I traveled there. And I was thinking about how far away that trip now seems, like a dream, and how being frozen in place I keep returning to Kanak in my mind. The hunters of Kanak still hunt narwhal, small whales with tusks, by hand, in kayaks, with harpoons. Yes! It's a way of life passed through millennia. Now, I keep thinking of that moment when the narwhal appeared as a flicker of light in the gulf. I watched it all from a cliff nearby. It seemed a little insane, actually. The hugeness of the world, our smallness. The narwhal came as an offering and a test. Today, there might be 50 hunters left on Earth who hunt whale like this. They share their meat, feeding the young and old. The narwhal skin, called muktuk, is an essential source of vitamin C and is eaten as communion, especially during celebrations. Greenlanders believe in communion with each other and nature. Arctic winter drives them into their own quarantine each year. For nearly four months in Kanak, there's no sun at all. Temperatures reach minus 20. <laughs> Rituals become ever important. The making and sharing of food, the mending of clothes, the feeding of the dogs. It's rare in American life to be as still as we've been and to now face a reckoning. Even as we begin to unfreeze ourselves, even in great upheaval, I wonder what will surface, what lesson waits to be learned. Maybe it's what the hunters of Kanak already know. There's still a way to be humble. There's still a way to be open, to hold one another in mind, to undivide ourselves.